So, back to what I'm saying. He says, when you got a little strength and has kept my word, can you still be diligent when you feel overwhelmed? Can you still be diligent? I mean, because, you know, sometimes we get overwhelmed and we like, you know what? I'm going to stop doing this for a while. I'm going to take time to focus on God to get strengthened. That's a blessing. Even Jesus would take time away from God. I mean, take time away for God. But Jesus would do that every day, you know. He wouldn't be so busy with work until three months go by and he got to separate himself from the work that God asked him to do to, to spend time with God. That's what we do. And sometimes, you know, that's just where we at. We need that. But Jesus is looking, see, on the path of purpose, when God opened the door for your purpose, one thing that helped you qualify is Jesus want to know, can you do it when, you, when you're full of energy? Can you still do it when you're tired? Because the work still got to be done, you know. When God positioned you and he released you for your purpose, you still got to do the work. You don't get to not do the work and spend time with God. Like you got to find a way that you got to find a way to spend time with God and get filled up with God and still do the work. You don't get to choose one or the other. You don't get to use Martha and Mary as a scripture to choose one or the other. Like when you know if that's where you at, praise God. But you need to learn how to wake up early in the morning before your day start and be merry. And then when your day start, be Martha. Like, because God, like, I, the work still got to be done. Like, the work still has to be done. Yes, it's the better thing to get in the face of God. Yeah, you know why it's the better thing? Because it positions you to do the work. But God's saying, listen, when you got a little strength, can you still do the work? Like, when you tired, you boggled down, can you still pull it together and do the work? I need somebody like I need somebody that's going to carry the cross like you know I need somebody that's going to carry the burden of doing my will even when you don't feel like it like even though when it feels so heavy you can't carry see crosses is heavy they're not light Jesus couldn't even carry the cross he dropped that thing boom and he had to get somebody to help him carry the cross and God will send you laborers but God want to know even when you're tired can you still do the work even when you get tired of focus on strongholds, can you still focus in and do the basic things that God asks you to do? Everybody in Real Club, God gave me a word to give everyone that's working on strongholds to text five people, just starting with five people a day, every day. You can judge within yourself, have you been obedient to that word? Some of us feeling like God telling us we don't even have to focus on strongholds. No. Now, maybe you feel like that. If that's where you at, praise God. I'm not knock knocking you. Focus on God. Worship God. But you're not going to qualify for your purpose. And the door is not going to be open for you to walk in what God asks you until you learn these things. So it's up to you. If you want to make an 11 days journey, 40 years, that's up to you. But God, like, listen, I leave you here until you get it right. So we can keep making all the justifications of why we can't do the work. God, like, listen, these things still need to be done. You still need to learn how to overcome pride. You still need to learn how to overcome anger. You still need to learn how to overcome selfishness. Because you can't even walk in the fullness of your purpose until you learn it. You understand? So, and what else was some of the keys? And has not denied my name. So can you do the work? Can you be consistent? Can you be diligent even when you don't feel like it? He said, it has not denied my name. Jesus, Jesus wants people that openly profess Christ, that are not afraid to let their life, their light and their life shine for Jesus. You know, sometimes we like Peter. You know, before Peter was converted, he did this. You know, he hide and behind, he hide and conform into the world because he didn't want to be persecuted. He didn't want to be judged. He didn't want to be crucified with Christ. But how many know we can't walk in authority and walk in our purpose and reign with Christ and we don't allow ourselves to be cruci crucified and suffer with Christ? Peter didn't want that, so he found himself hiding in the midst of the world. But the people said, you've been with Jesus. Even your speech betrayed him, and he kept denying it. You understand? God, God wants people to let their whole life be an open vessel. Now, I'm not necessarily... For you... One part of not denying Jesus may be stand on the corner and say, you know, I believe Jesus is Lord real, real loud. But for somebody else, it might be simple as when God asks you to give your testimony of how you was molested, you share it even though you, you think people are going to be judged. That's also not denying his name. Jesus saying, listen, are you willing to give yourself a sacrifice for me that if I want to use your whole life, even the embarrassing part, 
even the parts that you think people will judge you. Can I use your whole life as an open book? Can you can you can you be here before me? Can you be vulnerable and open and let me use your whole life? It's some of you ain't you you never tell your testimony like you know. You never tell your testimony. Why is it that you never tell your testimony? How come you've been around for people for two, three years and they don't even know your testimony in the Lord? You know? Why are you hiding your testimony? You know? That's in a sense, that's denying that's denying his name. You denying what God has done for you, like. Why are you ashamed? The Bible says in Romans chapter five, it also talks about the protocol before you get validated for your purpose. It says to them that he tried, he also um let me read it before I body it. Romans chapter five. And I'm believe it or not, I'm almost done. Verse 3, and not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulations work as patience. And patience experience and experience hope. And hope makes us not ashamed because of the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. So God set up situations to help you have the, you got to have the right attitude in those situations, patience. Through that, you get, you get experience, experiential knowledge, experience with God, experience in the ministry. And then through that, you know, you become to a place where you're not ashamed. You know? So these are just some of the points, you know. I was taught this. God says, to him that overcometh will I make a pillar. So God is saying, to them that overcome, you know. God puts us in many situations, trials, tests, because he believes in us. He believes that we can overcome. But to those that overcome, you know, those are the ones that he opened the door and allowed them to walk in the fullness and their purpose. So it's a lot of things that God is expecting of us. It's a lot of things, situations that God has prepared so that we can overcome. We're being tested. We're being proven. God want to validate us for our, with our purpose. He want to give us experiential knowledge with him, experiential knowledge of the ministry. We're in a training ground. So I just want to share that because, you know, this is why some of the things that even God has shown you isn't happening. We have to prepare ourselves. You know, prepare places are for prepared people. The wilderness was, was designed by God to prepare people for the promised land that he had for them. Okay? Now, this will lead me to my next point, And I just read it in Romans. That another big qualifier for your purpose... Is we got to come to a place where we walk in love. You know, we got to come to a place where we walk in love. Because faith worketh by love. You know, your gifts, all that worketh by love. The Bible said Jesus was moved with compassion and healed all the people. You know, we, wanna, we want the supernatural of God, but all that stuff, it, it operates by love. Like, you know, God, God is not in the business of granting people these abilities to exalt man like you know the gifts of the spirit are the love of God if, if you don't even know what God expect of you and somebody prophesied to you if they tell you secret things about your life the Bible says that that person to bow down and worship God and testify that God is in you of a truth Jesus prophesied to the woman at the well and she said it's Come, let me tell you about a man that told me about my whole life. But all Jesus told her about is her relationship situations. But she felt like her whole life was open before God. And God was concerned about her whole life. The fact that God would use a messenger to point out details of her life. You know, when somebody prophesied to you, it's like you feel the presence of God. It brings God so near to you. And you know that God cares, that he cares about the details of your life. So prophecy is a is an extension of God's love. Healing is an extension of God's love. Okay? The gifts of, in the, of the spirit. Give it to me, son. Give me the straw, son. Pardon self. The gifts of the spirit are an extension of God's love. The supernatural, people being set free. That's because God loved people enough to set them free. You know, so we got to, you know, we got to come to a place and I know we love God and we do love people, 
But like I said, God got to test us. He got to validate us. He got to prove us. He got to break the things off of our life, the yokes off our life, so that we can flow in love a lot more easily. We have God inside of us. Therefore, we have love inside of us. But all the barriers and the boxes and the thorns and the thistles that's choking, the strongholds, you know, the unrenewed mind, the, the carnality that hinders that which God put inside of us, the excellency that is of his spirit from actually flowing out of our lives like rivers of living water. Okay? So, I don't know what you mean by that. Okay? I don't know what you mean by that, but whatever. So, you're welcome, sis. You're welcome. Peace and blessings. I am set me. Yes. Why you, you know? I don't. I don't. I don't understand why people get on and then say stuff like that. Diva on fleek. I don't understand why you. Why you would get on someone else's periscope? You you're embarrassing yourself. You look real foolish doing stuff like that. Especially when we're we're in the presence of God, getting wisdom. You know, from the Father. You know, I'm gonna pray for you because you don't even realize that you speak in condom. You, what you're doing, you're bringing damnation upon yourself because you're fighting against God. I'm gonna pray for you. You know, I love you. You know, Amen. I love you though, Diva. Something. I love you, and I pray that God save you. I pray that God deliver you because hell is hot, and I don't want you to go there like. And I don't want you to bring condemnation and prices and judgment upon yourself. You know? So, Father, I ask that you just, I just ask that you just help that person. I ask that you minister to her by her spirit. I ask that whatever demon is in her that's rising up, anger and hatred be bound up, Lord. And I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would personally bring deliverance into her life in the name of Jesus Christ. And that you would set her apart for a purpose of God, Lord. Whatever stronghold is manifesting, causing distractions, let it be silenced in the name of Jesus so your word can continue to flow in a pure way. I know in every person to hear your voice, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Amen. I do like, you know, I want to be more like Christ and be more loving, you know. So I pray that God, whatever, whatever making her feel like that, you know, I pray that God would just help her like, because that joint is crazy. You know, we reap what we sow and prices be real. Like, we just be racking them up by doing stuff. All right, Matthew chapter 5. Verse 38. You have heard that it is said, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, do not resist the evil man who injures you. But if anyone strikes you on the right jaw or cheek, Turn to him the other one too. And if anyone wants to sue you and take your undershirt, tunic, let him have your coat also. And if anyone forces you to go one mile, go with him two miles. Give to him who keeps on begging from you. And do not turn away from him who would borrow at interest from you. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you to show that you are the children of your father who is in heaven. For he makes his son rise on the wicked and on the good and makes the rain fall upon the upright and the, and the wrongdoers alike. For if you love those who love you, what reward can you have? Do not even the tax collectors do that? And if you greet only your brethren, what more than what more? Than others are you doing? Do not even the Gentiles, the heathen, do that? You therefore must be perfect, growing into complete maturity of godliness in mind and character, having reached the proper height of virtue and integrity, as your heavenly Father is perfect. And the bond of perfection is love. So, you know, Jesus said, pray for those that despitefully use you. He said, you've heard it said before, there was a time where it was permissible to love the people that love you and hate your enemy or reject or to stay away from a person that you 
still has something against you. But now it's unacceptable. You know, Jesus said, love those, like, pray for them, you know. And I, I know all of us have that capability to do that. And I know all of us have done that at different times. But, you know, God is looking for us to be a little bit more consistent in doing it. You know, he wants us to be able to do it consistently. He wants us to be able to shift our heart, you know, at any given time and let God flow, let the love of God flow. Because when we take an offense and we hate this and reject this person and no, we're not dealing with this person. What we do is we entangle our heart. It binds our heart up. And the things that God, um, God has designed our heart to carry spiritual virtues. We believe with our heart. We love out of our heart. You know, God is in our heart. The Holy Spirit flows out of our heart. The gifts are contained in our heart. That's why you got to guard your heart because out of it flows the issues of life. So the things of God, they flow from our heart. But if the enemy binds your heart up and get it twisted all up and place all these thorns and offenses and bitternesses around your heart and hatred, you know, and judgment, you so focused on why you don't want to deal with this person or why you don't like that or what's wrong with this. That's why it's hard for you to flow. And that's why you haven't been validated to walk in the fullness of your purpose. Because you got to learn how to keep your heart free. That's why I always, t you know, I, you know, I was taught by by people in my life that is an authority. I had to learn how to go with the flow. We be trying to control everything. We want everything to be on time. Want everything to be our way. And that's how the enemy, the strong. That's why your strongholds always manifesting. You always prideful. You always selfish. You always angry because you always want your way. You don't understand. That's why you can't overcome strongholds because you got, you're dealing with an unsurrendered will. Your will is not even surrendered. You're judging everything. You're gossiping about everything. You're complaining about what everybody doing because you want things your way. But Jesus said the first thing you got to learn how to do is deny self and surrender your will. Surrender how you think she, things should be and seek how it need to be in the kingdom. You know? So that's why we have so much difficulty and our heart get all twisted and knotted up. And then we got to fast and pray for two weeks just to release our heart so God can even speak to us about a subject. So a lot of times, you know, things aren't on time. Things could be done differently. But I just go with the flow. You know what I mean? I don't even try to fight it and resist it. The Lord said, don't even resist it. We're trying to resist and no, you need to do this. It should have been like that. You're trying to resist everything. She just said, don't resist it. You see what I'm saying? Don't fight it. Don't try to resist it back. Don't try to wrestle it like. Just go with the flow. People not on top, just go with the flow. Praise God that they're here. Find the good in it. Should they be on time? Yes. Should things be done in decency and order? Yes. But the, we got to end it. Some people, you know what I mean? They're not responsible. We also have an enemy that's always trying to throw a monkey wrench. So it's always going to be something. If, if something is truly of God, it's always going to be something to try to derail it. You just go with the flow and be consistent and be diligent. Even when you start, keep your heart free so God can still use you. You're trying to make everything so perfect in the natural that your heart all bound up and you wrestling with everybody trying to do it. Now when it's time for God to actually use you, you can't even be used because your heart is all knotted up. And the things of God can't even flow. So gee, that's why Jesus is teaching us about these things of love. Stop trying to just go with the flow. Let God have his way. Trust that God is in complete control. Keep your heart free. You know, don't let your heart be all knotted up and bound up. Because God, can, the spirit of God can't flow. You know, Jesus can't do many miracles where it's offense. So God, Jesus can't even manifest miracles through you because your heart is all offended and bound up and twisted up. And I'm saying you, but I'm saying you because when I listen to it and I, I see myself speaking to myself, I'm talking to myself. I'm saying you. Praise God. So, you know, God wants us to bring us to a place of a different, a, a different dimension of love. Oh, my goodness. Who is that? I am sent me. Huh? Yes. <laughs> love you, sis. God bless. Miss you, big head. <laughs> and pe people on the conference call on a Periscope. Um, my sister Kat is on there like, that's my sis. I just miss her. So I just got excited to realize she was on. It's a blessing. Sister Kat. She's a mighty woman of God, like powerful. 
So, <laughs> praise God. So, you know, and then, you know, it's interesting because he's saying, listen, I want you to walk in a whole nother level of love, you know? I don't want you to love how the world love, you know? The world got conditions to their love. I'll love people, I'll love this person if they fit all my conditions. If they do this, this, and that, if they change, if they act right, then I'll love them. Like, you know, we don't say it like that, but we say it in so many words, you know? You know, we always uh, got, we always talk about what everybody else is doing that we don't like. And basically, those are our conditions. Like, if they change and do things the way we like it, then it'd be a lot easier to love them. And, and you know, a lot of times that's true. Sometimes it's hard to love people because they just get on your nerves. Like, you know, sometimes it's probably hard to love me because I just be getting on people's nerves sometimes and I ask for forgiveness. Sometimes I'm just ignorant. I'm just being honest. Like, I'm God still working on me. You know, I'm getting, I'm, I'm being approved for greater dimensions in God, you know. And God has sent somebody to unlock that door and pray for me and release me. It'd be a blessing. But, you know, sometimes people get on your nerves or they strongholds attacking you or they letting the enemy use you or they being carnal or they not in the same place where you at. So how kind of, maybe how they move, it irritates you or somebody at your job always cursing and speaking blasphemes against God. You know, sometimes it'd be hard to love those people, but you still have to, like, you know. We God still ask us to, you know. And um, one thing I want to say about walking in love, it doesn't mean that you got to, like, you know, kiss everybody butt or, you know, chase behind people. I don't necessarily, you know, or give millions of dollars to people to prove that you love them. But um, what I, how I always define it, is am I willing? If God asks me, am I willing? You know? I, I Sometimes, it's some people, when the assignment is finished, I be so happy. I praise God. Like, dang, thank you, Lord, that that assignment is done to the glory. I leave, in, I leave them in your hands. I pray for them. I love them. You know? But I always, I always have to have a willing heart that if God called me to demonstrate any measure of love or minister to that person or pray for that person... That I always have a willing heart towards God. That's one way that I, I examine myself. That if there's any bitterness, anger, hatred in my heart for a person. Or disdain or unforgiveness. I always examine myself. The Bible says examine yourself to see if you be in the faith. I examine myself to say, dang, you know what? If God asks me to minister to that person, am I willing? Like, you know? And when it comes to the love of God and loving others, you know, we have to have a willing heart. You know, I was taught this, that by Angel, she taught me that, you know, you got to, with God, to walk with God, you got to be teachable, which means you got to be humble. You can't think you know everything. You got to be remain teachable. You got to be flexible, which means that God can change on a drop of a hat. You could be like, well, I'm doing this. And God be like, no, you're not. You're doing this. And you just got to be willing to be flexible. God can have you doing one thing for a season and then switch and then have you doing something else. So you just got to be flexible with God, you know. If we're not flexible with God, we, we run the risk of becoming religious, having the form of God, but denying the actual power and flow of the spirit of God. You got to be flexible, teachable, dependable. Can God depend on you? That's number one. Can God depend on you? Can God give you an assignment and know without a shadow of a doubt that you're going to get it done? And secondly, can people depend upon you? Don't think that you're going in full-time ministry or you're going to be you're going to qualify for your purpose if you don't have a testimony that people can depend upon you. People. Okay? If you need a scripture, go read 2 Timothy chapter 3. The qualifications of a bishop and the qualifications of an elder. Now you say, "Well, that's a bishop." Well, that's true, you know, maybe you're not going to be a bishop. But a qualification of a man or woman of God, somebody walking in their purpose. That one of the things is said that they got to have a good report or a good re re reputation of all. Which means that other people got to validate that your character is what it is. That you're a dependable and consistent per person. People are like, well, it don't matter what people think. That's a lie. Well, maybe where you at right now, when you first starting, it don't matter. But when God want to approve you for a purpose, it do matter what people think. You know, because you got to have a good report of all. 
So you can't be on your job just doing anything and then be like, I can't wait till God let me off this job so I can do full-time ministry. No. When you're on your job, God is testing you. God is building up a testimony to validate the thing that you're going to say for God. See, people want to see the works and didn't see it. Didn't hear you tell, tell, tell about God. They want to see the stuff demonstrated, then you proclaim. So you at work, you on time, you patient, you always subject to authority, you always got a smile on your face, you always carry joy, peace, all these things. People will look at that demonstration. So then when you start, when God release you in your purpose and you start preaching and all that, it's easier for people to receive because they already seen the, the character. They already seen the fruit. All you telling them is why you do it now. Like, that's why I got to be done that way. Amen. I, I, I'm not getting no amen hearts, praise God, but it's just the truth anyhow. So God wants us to get us to a place of love. He said, don't love how the world love. Don't love how the Gentiles were love. Don't love how the heathen love. You got something that they don't have. You have the spirit of God on the inside of you. So it's unacceptable for people of God to love in the same way that people love. That's why Jesus, God said that blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Why? Because worldly people going to give you crap counsel like if, if I was you, I wouldn't even talk to that person. If I was you, I'd cut them off. If I was you, but you not me. like, And you don't even have the spirit of the Lord on the inside of you. And God holding me to a different standard because of it. So I can't do, I can't take your advice if you was me. Because you're not me. You understand? You mean you don't even have no, you may not even have the same relationship with God that I do. So no, don't tell me your advice if you was me. You're not, you're not me. Like. You know, we all, we be so easy. Listen, if I was you, I'd do this. If I was you, I wouldn't let nobody talk to you me like this. If I was you, I'd cut that person off. No, because you got children. You got this to work, worry about. Won't you ask God, God, what do you want me to do? God, like, you know what? I still want you to love that person. So the person, if I was you, no, God want me to still love that person. Like, no, I don't receive that. You feel me? Because God want to have us at a higher level of love. Our love is on a scale of 1 to 10, a 1, a 2, or a 3. And we think you're doing something. And God expect our love to be a 7, 8, 9, or 10. He expect our love to be supernatural. Like, you know? Okay. Now, my sister gave a scope. She said, you know, we the Bible says love one another. We think we be loving one another. Jesus said love not one another the way that I loved you. Now, that's a whole different love. Are you loving people the way that Jesus loved them? You know, is that how you loving people or are you loving people justifying yourself because you feel like you love them like the way you think they need to be loved? It's a way you can examine yourself. You can read first Corinthians chapter 13. If I speak, if I can speak in the tongues of men and, and even of angels, but have not love that reasoning, intentional spiritual devotion, such as is inspired by God's love for for and in us. I am only a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have prophetic powers, the gift of interpreting the divine will and purpose, and understand all the secret truths and mysteries and possess all knowledge, and if I have sufficient faith so that I can remove mountains but have not love, God's love in me, I am nothing and useless to nobody. Even if I dole out all that I have to the poor and providing food and if I surrender my body to be burned or in order that I may gl glory but have not love God's love in me I gain nothing what does God love look like the love of God has 12 manners of fruits I'm gonna teach you on that one day it has 12 manifestations the love of God but listen to some of the characteristics love endures long and is patient and kind can you endure long with people in your assignment? Can you be patient with people knowing that God is doing the work on them? Can you have grace? Can you still be kind? You know, can you be um, mannerable to people? That's what kind is, having manners. Do you have manners? Do you talk to people politely? You know, love never is envious, you know, nor boils over with jealousy. Because love would celebrate what someone else has. 
love honors others and celebrates with people like and give God the glory for what others can do. Is is not boastful or vainglorious. That's pride. We always boasting about what we can do, who we are, how great we are. Love is not like that. Love is humble. Love takes in consideration other people. So you won't boast how great you are over someone that is weak because you're not you wouldn't be taken you, you out of love, you would take into consideration how they may feel if you did that. Love does not display itself haughtily or unseemingly or rude, you know. Sometimes I or we can be very rude and the way we talk to people can be rude. You'd be very boastful, very self-exalted, prideful, me, or selfish, and that's not love, you know. It is not conceited, arrogant, inflated with pride, you know, because love appreciates others. Love takes in consideration others. Love give God the glory, you know. It is not rude, unmannerly, and it does not act unbecomingly. You are out of order, disorderly. You know, acting inappropriate, acting in a way that's not appropriate for the setting. Like, that's that's love doesn't do that. So if you're doing that, then that's a that's the evidence that whatever love, you know, that you're demonstrating. Sometimes we act unseemingly, especially in relationships, boyfriend, girlfriend, husband and wife. You cuss the wife out, you cuss the the boyfriend out, and then you be like, I only do it because I love you. Uh, you just make me so mad sometimes. Well, that that's not a pure love of God. Because the pure love of God, it would not lead you to behave in such a manner that's not unse that's unseemingly. Okay? Love, God's love in us, does not insist on its own rights or its own way. It's not self-willed. You know, we always come, some of us, we complain, we murmur. Why? Because we got an expectation and we want things to go that way. When, we're, when we do a lot of that, that means that we're, we're dealing with an unsurrendered will. And the love of God is not in that. Okay? It says, does not insist on or its own rights or its own way. Because it takes consideration of others. For it is not self-seeking. It is not touchy or fretful or resentful. It takes no account of the evil done to it. It pays no attention to to a suffering wrong. The King James said, peace and blessings, sis. Hey, sis. Yo, listen, sis. Um, We went to a nice beach today, so let me know as soon as possible if you still want to go to the beach, big head. Because we went to that at, at CM Beach. That thing was a whole blessing. It was so peaceful. You could go on Facebook and see the Facebook Live I posted. But the only thing about it is after today we can't swim. So we won't be able to go in the water. But we can, if you want, we can still go on the beach. It's a playground. It's kind of small. It's not a lot of people. It's so peaceful. Unless you got a different place. So just let me know. Like, if we do it that way, we're just going to have to find it. We're going to have to just do the baptism another day with the pool that Jamal got. Praise God. So I leave it in your hands because you, you wanted to do it. So you let me know what you want to do. And I do love you, by the way, you know. We family regardless. So, praise God. Um, Love. I'm at 1 Corinthians 13. Sometimes, sometimes look, sis, we go back and forth because we, we just alike. Like, that's what it is. Like, we just just alike. So, we'd be like, we just do the same things to each other because we just alike. And I noticed that. But I still love you, though. It is. Um, it says that love, it is not touchy or fretful or resentful. It takes no account of the evil. The King James says, this 1 Corinthians 13, verse 5. Oh, no, it's not verse 5. Well, it says it takes no record. In one version, I can't remember which version. But it says that love holds no record of wrong. Praise God. Love holds no record of wrongdoing. I 
I praise God. You know, so it says, it takes no account of the evil done to it. It doesn't hold a record of wrong. Like, now, you know, some of us, including myself, we judge, you know, we judge people. And, you know, the Bible says that we should judge people, but use a righteous judgment. But, you know, a lot of times we discern things on people's life. We notice things about people. We pay attention to people. And then we judge them, but our judgment don't be righteous. We classify them and we be like, you know what? This is this type of person, so I know how to deal with them. And then what we do is we got, when, you ju when, when a judge judge someone, they have all the facts and the evidence that brings them to that conclusion. So that's what we do. We judge people. And we got a whole list of facts and records and evidence, you know, that helps us come to the conclusion of the judgment that we have with a person. And I noticed with myself that I was that I be holding records when I get into an argument or a disagreement. See, I get in a disagreement with my wife. You know what I mean? Unfortunately, we do sometimes. Like we still we still a work in progress. And I praise God. I'm like, well, you said this. I noticed that I bring up something that she said two months ago or something she did a month ago or something she said three weeks ago. Maybe she even forgot about it, but I'm st I still remember it. Like, And now we having an argument, I'm making conclusions about her of, of all these judgments, of all these facts, all these evidence, all these records of things that she's done. Like, That helped me come to this judgment about her. Well, you, you don't want to do this because... Last week you said this and the week before you did that. But how is that the love of God? The love of God is not taking hold of all these records of all these things that the person did against you. That's where forgiveness come in. You know, we want God to forgive us and throw our sins in the sea of forgetfulness and remember it no more. But we want to forgive people and remember everything they did to us. You know, I'm speaking for myself because I noticed that, you know, when I had a couple situations and a couple debates and uh, confrontations with people that I brought up a lot of things that they'd done in the past. Like, well, you said this and last year you did this. I'm like, dang, I've been holding on that in my heart all that time. I kept that thing as a record in the file cabinet, like just for times like this. And is that really the love of God? You know, the Bible says the way you judge, God will judge you. Do we really want to treat people like that and then, you know, have God deal with us like that? I don't really, I, I can't really afford to be in a position where God deal with me like that. Because I have prices stacked to the ceiling, you understand? So I want to demonstrate the type of forgiveness to others that I want to receive from God. Some people are like, well, what is he talking about? Well, you read the parables about forgiveness that Jesus talked about. He said that it was a king that forgave someone of an insurmountable debt. Forgave them. They didn't, owe God, they didn't owe the king anything. And then that person turned around and held somebody accountable of a tiny debt that they owed him. And the Bible says that the king, then the king remembered the debt that he owed. And Jesus gave this a parable about forgiving, uh, receiving forgiveness from God and also forgiving others. It said that the king remembered the debt. So God can throw it away in a sea of forgetfulness, amen. But he also can remember. But he does that based on how you treat other people. Like, you know, it's just, it's just the way it is it's so. So I just was thinking about these things about, you know, I was examining myself. God, why isn't these things happening? Why isn't these things happening? God said, for everything that somebody got to unlock the door for you. Then it, made, it, then it made me examine myself. God, am I, am I being diligent? Am I being consistent? Am I following the instruction that you gave me, that leaders gave me to a T? You know, angel told me to do text this amount of times, confess this. To, am, I, am I doing it? My pastor asked me to show up on time on service on Sunday. I'm showing up, but am I showing up on time? 
Angel asked me to text in the morning. Do I text in the morning? Do I, do I make excuses that up? Oh, I woke up with enough time to go to work and I text in the afternoon? Or do I do it two or three days and then miss a day? Am I really being consistent for God to say, you know what, son, you're ready to walk in the fullness of your purpose? And I being, am I being consistent and diligent with doing the things that God has asked me to do, the periscopes, the fellowship on Saturday? Am I doing it on time? You know, am I allowing it to be a big free for all? Am I keeping things in order? You know, am I making sure that I have enough time for my wife, for my children? Am I working on the strongholds? Yeah, I got a lot of things. Am I writing? Yeah, I got a lot of things that I have to do to be approved. You know, but God, God know I can do it. And I got to be diligent with it, even when I got a little bit of strength. Jesus said, I know that you got a little bit of strength, but you still kept my word. See, that's what Jesus is looking for me to do. I'd be like, man, God, I'm just so tired. I just want to take a nap, God. God, like I know you got a little bit of strength, but I, I need to see that you can still push and do what I need you to do in a timely manner. You know? But I just... You know, some of us, we just want God to just release all this stuff without responsibility. And I never, ever forget this. God said, I'm not raising up irresponsible sons. God, God, that's not what God is doing. God is not in the business of just releasing all this glory and anointing to us. And we're incapable of being responsible and being a good steward towards God. You know? Am I being consistent with my resources? I knew ever since I first started walking with the Lord... You know, when God told me that that part of the mention of my calling was to be an apostle. That's what God told me. I never even heard of anybody. I, I don't come from den denominations that's Pentecostal. I come from religious denominations, Jehovah Witness, Baptist, Seventh-day Adventist. I never even heard of nobody ever say they was a prophet. I didn't even know what an apostle was. God just told me. But ever I started studying in the scriptures. And the Bible says that all the people came and laid all their resources at, at the apostles' feet. So I knew ever since I first started walking with the Lord that I would be in a position to be responsible over great wealth. And you know how God started teaching me? God started teaching me by being poor. Like, I, 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 I always took an attitude to not chase stuff, to be poor, like. But I always knew that God would put me responsible over millions of dollars. I always knew that. But the reason I took in my mind to be poor was Peter said, after people laid houses and land, silver and gold at Peter's feet. When, Peter, when somebody asked Peter for money, he said, silver and gold, have I none? Why? Because he knew all those resources did not belong to him. He, he stayed poor in his mind. He stayed poor in his spirit. So he had all these resources, houses, lands people gave Peter, laid it at his feet. But he still had an attitude, silver and gold, have I none? That's the way that, that was the way, the attitude that he possessed to be a good steward over someone else's possessions. He never took into account that all that God gave him to steward was his own. He knew that it belonged to God and his, he had a responsibility towards God with, with what was given to him. Like, So I started with $12 worth of canteen worth of food. I would pay my tithes. I would be responsible. I would try to make it stretch over two weeks. I wouldn't eat all my stuff up in three days and don't have no, no more food. I would ration it out for it so it can last into the, just the way that God started teaching me. You know? I'm just sharing that because I was people like, well, I don't got I was I was paying tithes with twelve dollars. Like I would set aside two dollars worth of food and to be the tithe unto God. I don't care if you got ten dollars, tithe the dollar unto God. Show yourself approved. But we want financial blessings. It's nothing for God to do it, but can God trust you? Are you dependable? Are you flexible? Are you teachable? So I pray that this scope encourage you. I pray it provoke you. I pray it challenge you. I pray you it inspire you to show, to show yourself approved unto God. To say, God, I thank you that you've already given me these things. 
You've already called me with a high calling. You've already blessed me with spiritual blessings. But give me the grace to walk worthy, God. Give me the grace to be prepared for all that you have for me, Lord. Give me the grace to carry such an anointing. Give me the grace to carry signs and wonders and miracles. You know? Give me the grace. I want to be married, God. But give me the grace to start preparing to know what it's like to carry a husband. To carry a marriage. Like, God, I'm believing you for children. But start preparing me to have children. Like, And then when God see that you're ready, he'll open the door for you. So some of us, the door is not open because God see that we're not ready. Like, And I'm speaking for myself too. Because I'm like, God, what's up? What's going on? Like, And God like, son, you're not ready. Like, You haven't been consistent in this. You haven't been consistent with this. You, you be consistent with the strongholds for a little bit. And then over here, you let the strongholds just have its way. You take two steps forward and then four steps backward. I want you to press toward the mark. You understand? So I pray that this encourage you. I pray that it help you. I pray that it shine a light on your situation. I pray that if you're in the wilderness, if you're in the midst of the fire, if you feel like you're in a dry season, if you feel like you're being tested by God, I pray that it give you enough energy to show yourself approved, to be diligent in whatever God is asking you to do. And I pray it inspire you to, to walk in a greater dimension of love. I'm not expecting you to be like, God is not expecting you to be like Jesus tomorrow. But let us aspire and let us have a passion and a desire to want to grow into a greater dimension of love and not set up for low dimensions, you know. God called us to be love just as he is love. God has called us to, he said that we'll be known by the love, you know. And God is not satisfied with low levels of love. So I pray that this help you. I love you. Be encouraged. Father God, I just lift the scope unto you, lift the people up unto you. Father, we want to be qualified. We want to be prepared. Many are called, but few are chosen, Lord. We don't want to miss the mark. We want to press toward the mark, Father God. We want to be uh, approved before you, Lord God. We want to pass the test, Lord. We want to be validated. We want to walk worthy of our vocation. Because we're indebted to you, Lord, for saving us, for delivering us, for choosing us, for, 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 for uh, seating us in heavenly places, for calling us and giving our lives honor. We owe it all to you. And we want our lives to be pleasing. We want our lives to bring great joy to your heart, Lord Jesus. And we want to help others, Lord. So continue to break off any yokes off our life, any strongholds, any bondages, God. Any demon oppression, Lord God, break it off our life. Liberate us, Lord God. Free us that we may be free to serve. We may be free to walk in love. We may be free to walk in our calling and destiny. We thank you for the tribulations that's working patience. We thank you for giving us an attitude of gratitude and a healthy attitude while we're in the press. We thank you for the experiences because, you know, no person can qualify for a job without experience. We thank you that the love of God is shed abroad in our heart by the Spirit. We thank you, Lord, for a new desire to want to walk in love, to have a heart like David, to look for those that we can show loving kindness to, Lord. We thank you for signs and wonders and miracles following our faith in you and validating the words that we preach in Jesus' name. We thank you that we're in the time of proving that you do believe in us, God. That you believe that we can pass the test. That we can be approven for what you called us to do. Just give us the grace to do it, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Peace and blessings, family. I love y'all. May you rest in peace and enjoy the rest of your night. God bless.